Hello and welcome to an Ear Splitting Bike Shows UK, where we take a look at the hottest biking extravaganzas throughout the country. Hi, I'm Stu Evans and this week's Bike Shows UK comes to you from sunny Mallory Park in the glorious county of Leicestershire. We're at the post TT races. The difference between this show and some of the others is that not only do you see loads and loads of lovely Concours machines, we're going to meet some really major racing heroes and there's going to be some top class racing too. Come on, let's have a look at it. The post TT races here at Mallory Park came about as a kind of cool down race for the racers who had been out on the Isle of Man racing in the Tourist Trophy. There was so little money involved in it then that they used to stop here on their way home to earn themselves a few bob. These days though it runs mainly on nostalgia. Let's take a closer look at it. Purely spectating, taking in the atmosphere. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's just a pity about the weather, really. But it uh, doesn't change the noises. Uh, I'm here sort of to enjoy the nostalgia and bring back all these memories and hear these wonderful noises and all these exotic bikes and see the riders of yesteryear, as it were. It's a great uh, attraction and thoroughly enjoyable by everybody, I think. And to see these bikes and these, hear these noises is tremendous. I managed to bump into Nick, the event organiser. Nick, what will the thousands of punters who are coming here today see? Right, the actual when they actually come in today, they'll see um, over 70 auto jumble plots. We've sort of increased on what there was last year. We've got club stands, we've got trade stands. Um, down in the actual bottom area of the field, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got the MV club, um, people like that. So, I mean, the MV Club, the MV's uh, one of the Italian marks. This is obviously an Italian feel to it, this whole show, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. With it being the 50th anniversary this year of Cecil Sanford first winning on his 125, mm -hmm. they're actually having a parade around the track. Uh, I think there's 37 riders all together if they turn up. Yeah. Jim Redmond stand, I dare say that's just a small part of the uh, trophy collection that guy's got. These are some of the bikes from uh, the Luke Lawler collection from the States, uh, flown over especially for the show, and proving very popular with the punters. We're about to fire this thing up. So, uh, mind you, is. Cecil Sanford, yes. tell me, mate, what do you get out of coming to the tip post TT? Well, it's just old memories coming back, and I meet a lot of very nice people, and I go back with the bike that I rode, and uh, I shall ride it round later on, and I hope I shall thoroughly enjoy it. 
Well, you'll be out on the um, out on the Pride Lab on yes. on this one. Yes, that's right. Yeah, on the little MV one two five. And where did you uh, last race this one? I last raced this one in about uh, 54, probably in Holland. Outstanding. Thanks okay. very much. Sammy Miller, what hasn't he done? Sammy, meeting a load of old friends here today? Oh, it's great to be here again at Mallory Park and uh, great collection of classic racing bikes and um, some bikes out of the museum here. We've got the 16 valve MV, which is quite unique. I'm riding the Gilera too, the four cylinder Gilera, so it'll be really good to get out there and have a circuit. So you're not entering yourself into the race today for the prize money? Oh, well, let it to, leave it to the younger boys, you know. We'll just do the parading today. Excellent, cheers, Sammy. Cheers, all the best. Each week, we meet a local biker who's going to take us on a whistle-stop tour of the local biking area. And this week, we have surpassed even ourselves. We have got a really good bloke. And remember, Thrill Seekers, that the louder you scream, the faster we go. So hold on tight. Howdy, my name's Glenn Richards. I'm from Adelaide, Australia. I currently reside here in Hinkley, Leicestershire. I'm uh, over here doing the British Super White Championship on a Kawasaki ZX7 for Hawk Kawasaki. And I'm going to be your local biker for today. Now just let me introduce you to my bike. This is a Kawasaki ZX9 2002 model. Inline four cylinder, 900cc, putting out approximately 140 horsepower. It's a fantastic motorbike, very smooth, very, very comfortable. Uh, I enjoy riding this thing uh, away from the hustle and bustle of the racetrack. It's uh, a very, very, very comfortable road bike. Well, there's, there's so many things that are, that are different. Um, I don't even really know where to start, but the, the, the wheels on a super bike are a lot lighter. The brakes, the brakes are a lot, a lot better. Uh, we run Olin's forks and Olin's rear, rear suspension. We change the triple clamps. Uh, we change the swing, swing and arm. We obviously change the exhaust system and every, every part in the engine is left, is not left untouched. There is, is the, the engine is completely different than the Superbike. Now that you've met me and my bike, we'll go for a ride and show you around. It's not just racing of the two-wheeled kind featured today. Check out these vintage and classic sidecars. One man who's proven very popular at this event is Giacomo Agostini. You can't be motorcycling's most successful racer with no less than 15 world championships without proving popular, now can you? Ago, this bike that you've got behind us, this is one you're going to be taking out later on, isn't it? Yeah, this is my original 500 uh, MV three-cylinder, and uh, I used to die. This is uh, my, the bike I win many times, and uh, 
give me a lot of emotion. So today I like to show this bike to the, these people in Mallory Park. And when was the last time you raced this bike? Ah, just uh, this year is already two times <laughs> because I uh, the parade, not race. The race is the last time it was in '73. But today you'll be taking it out on a parade. Yeah, but the parade I do one lap at Isle of Man uh, Friday, and uh, I do the parade here in Mallory Park today. Um, how, how does it feel to be back amongst all your old mates, all the guys you used to race with? Yes, of course it's always always much different because uh, when I race, I am younger and I try to win and uh, I'm fast. Now, of course, now is only demonstration because. Uh, it's impossible to do what I do before, so just uh, I want to show the bike to everybody and uh, say hello to everybody. This is all. So, so you're not here for the prize money today, then? <laughs> today, <laughs> the money we took the money when uh, when we win today. That's today. great. Uh, Ago, thanks very much okay. indeed. Well, that's all from the first part of the show. Join us back after the break. We'll be seeing more from the Post CT Course Italia, and we're doing the doing the bike brain quiz. Hi, I'm Shervens. Welcome back to Bike Shows UK from a sun-drenched Mallory Park. We've got loads more classic racing and gorgeous bikes for you this afternoon. But before we get on with that, let's have another look at a rather fast local guy. Here today we're going to take you uh, on a few of the local roads. There's the A444, which is a fantastic road heading from uh, Nuneaton up north to the M42. And then we've got the A47, which runs just directly outside my house here, all the way to Donington. Yes, there's two, two pubs I want to show you guys today. One is the Stoke Golding, called the Three Horseshoe, which is a local bikers pub, and the walls are filled with memorabilia from past and present riders. It's a very interesting little pub to have a bit of a look at. And we're also are going to have a look at the Royal Arms, which is very, very close to Mallory Park. And uh, it's a very good meal there and, and some very good accommodation. Bike shops here in Hinkley, there, there is only a couple in Hinkley. Uh, it's not that easy to get parts, but there is the Hinkley uh, Motorcycle and Scooter Centre in town and Drayton Croft. Here we are at the Triumph Factory, situated in Hinkley, just around the corner from my house. I've been here since 1991 and building quality British bikes. Thank you for joining us on our little tour of Leicestershire. Hope you guys had some fun and hopefully we'll see you at the next round of the British Superbikes. OK, pin back your ears and listen. Did you think Velocet was French? You were wrong. Ivan, tell us all about Velocet. Right, they were made at Hall Green in Birmingham okay. from the early part of the century, and uh, they, they, their name was based on the, the, the diminutive Velos. It was a company was Velos, and they had the the et was added for the two strokes. But in the in 1926, they built a first overhead camshaft, a, a very technically advanced machine, which actually went out and won the TT. And from then on, they were into the TT racing. And, and these bikes that we can see in front of us now, these are all race bikes? Descendants from that bike. They were great innovators. They had the first foot change. They had rear springing. That one was used in the 1936 TT. Looks quite modern, really. But that's the sort of people they were, and we're proud to be associated with them. And uh, luckily, we've been able to collect a few bits and assemble these machines. What's this one? This is uh, what they call the Rora. Harold Willis called it the Rora. It's not particularly noisy, but it's a supercharged shaft-driven twin with contra-rotating cranks. Uh, it was 
designed and built very quickly from 38 to 39. Unfortunately, the war stopped its development, and of course, Willis actually took ill and died in June. Do you race the thing? I mean, or do on parades? It's not raceable, but it's, it's, it's used for parades. We always bring it to this meeting, have done for years. And it is a runner? Oh, yes, it'll be out today, just once. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome to this week's Bike Brain Quiz here from Mallory Park. The idea of the quiz is very simple. We take two bikers from the local area. They have got one minute to answer as many questions as they can on general knowledge of motorcycles. The winners at the end of the series win a Yamaha race school track day at a track of their choice. Exciting stuff, I think you'll agree. This week we are joined with Jeff and Martin from the CBX Owners Club. You know the rules, guys? Are you ready? Okay. Then let's begin. Uh, which UK race circuit was the very first venue of the GP World Championship in 1949? Donington Park. Wrong, I'm afraid it was the Isle of Man. Who, in 1956, launched a bike called the Dominator 99? Norton. It was Norton. How many World Championship titles did Carl Fogarty win in his career? Six. Yes, you're right, it was six. Uh, six World F1 and four World Superbike. What was unusual about Yamaha's GTS 1000 bike? Front suspension was different. What was different about it? It's leading, leading link type front suspension. Yes, you're quite correct. It had hub centre steering. Which famous designer penned Aprilia's Moto 6.5? Stark. Philippe Stark, you're correct. Which Italian born, Italian manufacturer went bust in 2001? Envy Augusta. No, I'm afraid not. It was Bimota. What decade did Honda debut its first race bike? 60s. No, it was 1950s. That's it, that's time up, I'm afraid. Let's go to the scoreboard and see how you did. There's no stopping those Heaton Park lads at the Thunder Sprint who are still leading with 11 points. Ken, what have you got here? Uh, this is a 1926 Nera car, invented by a man, American, called Carl Niracker. Made on car principles, which is why it's called Nera car. Okay, so what is, it? obviously the engine's exposed, so point us out a few things that are different than this to a conventional modern motorcycle, Ken. Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, it's a 285cc two-stroke engine. It's set along the frame, so that it's got friction drive rather than a normal clutch and gearbox. What happens is that the pulley is allowed to move into, by the left hand twist grip, move into the flywheel at that point, and that gives you drive when the engine is running. When you're on the move, I'll just take it out of gear, you then move the ratio by this lever, and it moves that, that pulley out which gives you a higher ratio. That's it fairly simply how it works. It also has unusual hub centre steering on the front wheel. So Yamaha's GTS 1000 weren't the first for that after all then? They certainly weren't. Cheers, Ken. Now, this bit of things looks like a normal Hayabusa. Stand back and have a slightly better look, my friend, and you'll discover one or two minor modifications. 
The man responsible for modifications such as these is Jim. Jim, tell us what you've done to this here booster. Well, the main modification we've done on this is the wheels to take up the extra power we're putting through and stresses we're putting through the bike. The leading link forks across the front here and the main subframe all in behind the fairing. We've got link brakes to the sidecar and uh, massive, massive modifications to the, the suspension. Well, what sort of person do you expect to sell this to? We've done all sorts of people have been buying these, older and younger people. Anybody that just enjoys terrific fun. And uh, how do they go? Very fast, very quick indeed. They're tremendous. 160 mile an hour in the sidecar can be fun. So there you have it. If you want to take your shopping home in style at 160 mile an hour and you've got 13 and a half thousand pounds burning a hole in your pocket, perhaps this is the baby for you. Well, it was pretty good. The weather wasn't great. It was a bit wet and cold. There were plenty of great old bikes to see, and I got to see Agostini ride, which is what I really came for, so yeah, I'm pleased. It's been all right. A shame about the weather, but some good bikes, yeah. Yeah, it's been really interesting. Lots of ex-famous riders here. That's it this week from Mallory Park, and I've managed to pick up my own classic bike. What do you think of this beauty? Anyway, until next week, don't forget to visit our website and participate in our Bikers Forum online. I'm off out in the pool. See you soon. <laughs>